We're thankful that you come today to hear this word again. We are so thankful for the word of God and the blessings that he has given to all of us. And once again, we want you to hear the bl bl great blessings that he has for all of us. This is Revelation 14, 12 and 13. This is white, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their laborers and the works do follow them. And this is something that everybody needs to know. These are the saints of the tribulation who refuse to worship the beast, but that yet they remain loyal to the commandments of God and to Jesus Christ. God will have his faithful ones even in the tribulation who will wait patiently for him to vindicate them. And this is something that people have to understand how great these blessings are. And he says, behold, in Revelation 22, 12, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his works shall be. But then we see in Revelation 14, 8, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This is something that people have to understand, that you cannot follow what people are doing. And I want you to understand what God has done for you. First Corinthians, we read 12, 14, for the body is one member, but many, not one. We're all one in Christ, and he's the head. After we are born again, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then we think about, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And this is something that you need to know. And this is 1 John. And now we go to 1 John because you have to know all that he has given to us and he's in us. Remember, we have his holy temple and the Holy Spirit. And listen what he says in 1 John 3, 24. This is amazing. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given to us. Everything in this book is our promise. That's all you have. And you will never have any answer to prayer unless you use the Word of God. You have to use the Word of God, and the Spirit of God gives you all of the things that you need. And this is something that you have to understand. And then, to know Him, 2 Corinthians 1, Who hath also sealed us, given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Now, I have, I have given this before. But you know, this is something that you need to understand and know, and you have to hear these things twice at least. And I've read them more than 10 times. And this is something that after Revelation, the, the beginning of the tribulation period starts in Revelation chapter 6. So then, after Revelation chapter 6 comes, this is something that happens, and you have to see it and know it because, listen at this, they, after they see how bad things are, I'm not going to read chapter 6, but you have to read that because it's so important. And I beheld when he, this it, had opened the fifth seal, and there was a earthquake, and 
became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Instead of the people turning to Christ, they went to the woods. I have to read that to you. And what are they doing here? This is amazing. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see, instead of turning to the Lord, they could have turned to the Lord before this happened. They knew what was happening. That's why I'm wanting you to know this is the time to receive Christ. There's nothing else in this world. And he says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 13. You see, the Word of God has to be taught before you can know the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God has to use the Word of God. And this is something because it's worth it all. And that's why I'm here, because God loves you and I love you. But the hour cometh, John 4, 23, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship. You see, once you know the Word of God, your life changes. You can't obey Satan and obey the Word of God. It don't work. So here, this is John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And see what happens. People in the last days, they're not living like we lived. My mom and dad taught us, God knows your heart. And we learned that. And we knew we couldn't sin against anybody because God knows everything that we do. And this is something that people don't understand. In Hebrews 9, 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot? You see, well, not only did he give his life for us, but he gave us his pure blood. He was the only person that had pure blood. And this is something that people don't understand. And you have to read the Word of God. You cannot listen to man. You have to read the Word of God. John 17, verse 3. Now listen at this, because this is important. And this is life eternal, talking about Christ that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. His own blood, he loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. By his own blood, Christ entered in once into the holy place. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood. And see, once you know the Word of God, your life changes, and you will read the Word of God, and He will answer your prayers. Now, I'm going to say something about myself, because I never do this, but at 86, I want you to know how great God is. I have never had an alcoholic drink and never smoked. I have obeyed the Word of God from childhood. I never have pain, never have any medicine, never go to a doctor, and my health is perfect. And I want you to know that this is the Bible verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. The God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is for everybody that you will listen to. And you can't listen to people. 
You have to know the Word of God. And that's what God had taught me. There wasn't one day, 40 some days, that I was given a Bible verse, Bible t lesson for 40 years every week and did junior church 25 years. I couldn't do that without studying the Word of God. And I've loved every minute of it. And everybody has prayed for me because I haven't done this for money. But when people gave me money, I had Bibles printed up, New Testaments to give out to people. And I want you to know that I have the most blessed people in the world that love me. Barb that takes me now everywhere because I'm 86 and don't drive. And Justin has been the best gift in the world for me. And I have millions of people that pray. And I want you to know that under grace, God freely gives to the believing sinner eternal life and accords to us a perfect position. And you have the greatest blessings in the world when you love them and everybody else loves you. By his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having, etern having obtained eternal redemption for us. The blood is God's only purchase price of redemption for us. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, I just want people to know that none of this that has happened to me is not me, but the gift of our Heavenly Father, our Deity, our Lord Jesus Christ, that went to the cross to die for all of us, the sins of the whole world. And His love never ends. And God's glory is eternal. Everything that he does for us is eternal. And everything that he does for us is how we receive the blessings. Not what we do, but his divine love for us. He is love, and we are to love the way that he loves. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And we as a believer... Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Every person has to see God in your life with all of his divine, loving spirit and eternal glory never ending. And every word that we have in this book is a gift for all of us. And I know what that is, and I want that to happen to every person in the world, that there will not be one soul that would have to go to an eternal hell. And I thank thee and praise thee for this time. In Christ's name, amen. So as we come to this lesson today and think about what God has done, and the blessings of knowing what he does is never ending. And we can turn to every one of these lessons and find out how great he is. Revelation 19.20. Revelation 19.20. And the beast was, this is, a blessing and the beast was talent and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he desired them that hath received the mark of the beast and then that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into a lack 
a lake of fire burning with fire and brimstone. You see why we want you to know the truth? And then when we go to chapter 18 and 19 and 21, he says in chapter 21, verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. This is for us. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But listen at 21, Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful, you see, you're never fearful. You never are. You, you're never afraid. He, he, we are sealed by his blood. And then he says, and I will be his God. But look at the fearful and unbelievers. And this is all the abominable, all the evil forces. Listen at this. And murderers. You hate somebody, you're a murderer. And you're to be, you're to be virgins anyway. And whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. They'll never come out of there. And I've got these here to give to you, but I'm not going to get a, give them all out today. But this is what is going to happen to every person that is going to an eternal hell. There's no way to get out. And he says, no more death for us, no more sorrow, no more crying. And then to think that we are going to see some of our friends if we don't tell this truth that I just read to you. That is all for those that do not receive Christ. So this is something that the most powerful thing that I have today is the gift of eternal life. Matthew 24, 11. And all of these is so important. Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Today, that's what's happening. And then 24, 24, listen at this, for then, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And this is something that we cannot even think about how bad it is. So we turn to another 2 Corinthians 11:13. 2 Corinthians, this is amazing what God has given to us. And you know what? I told you before, I have never had burdens like this before. And I want you to know that you can pray for 100 fold just like I do every day. And it's not his will that any should perish. And this is a confidence we have. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears and we shall have the petitions we require of him. Second Corinthians chapter 11, right here it is. And listen what happens. Second Corinthians 11, this is 13 through 15. Judge in yourself. Is it calmly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? You see, people don't realize the difference in the gifts that God has given to us. We are to dress like women. And men are to dress like men. And this is how we are to live. 2 Corinthians 11 13 through 15. Now he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, 
transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You see, if you don't know the Word of God, they can't teach you. And then, because you won't know if they're telling the truth. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's what Satan does. That's why he's deceiving every person in the world today, if you don't know this book. And then, verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You see, once we have the Word of God and know it, nothing else matters, and this is what we need today. And then Revelation 13, chapter, chapter, Revelation chapter 13, and this is something we need every one of these to understand and know how different things are than we can see or hear anywhere because you have to know the Word of God. And this is 7 and 8. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life the Lamb shown from the beginning of the world. You see, how many saints do you know that are faithful to give you the Word of God? How many? And that has been my life. And it has been the greatest gift in the world. And to know what He has given to me, I want to give to other people. This is beginning, the greatest giving in the whole world. Revelation 14, while I'm here, Revelation 14, and this is 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone and in the presence of the Lamb. You see how wonderful it is to know the Word of God and know what is coming for those that are doing these things, the gospel of Christ, the creator only, must be worshipped. Christ is the only person is to be worshipped. And then we think of the warnings of the eternity of hell, the torments of hell forever. And Mark, Revelation 14, 11, and this is another one that we need. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night that worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You see, if you don't know what you're doing, this is what happens to the poor little children out here that we have tears over. And this is the saddest thing. Mark 9, 43. Mark 9, 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. And then we think about the good things that he's given to all of us. 
Revelation. We have just read 20, 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. And as we think about all of these gifts that God has given to us, they are the very best. Everything God gives is eternal and the very best in everything. And so, Revelation 20, verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then we see Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, it's such a blessing to know the good things are here, and that is what we can rejoice in. And then our hearts are broken because of the people that don't know the Word of God. And this is Isaiah 34, I'm sorry, 8 through 10. But it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the fire land becoming burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So we thank thee and praise thee today for this blessing. We're committing Christ to thank the blessings of all his suffering for each of us that we could have eternal life. And for those today that are listening, will be changed by reading the book of John, first and second and third John, and first and second Peter. And then they can read the book of Revelation and see the sins of the world that are happening right now. And we are thanking thee and praising thee for every person that's listening to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And right now, Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Receive this gift today for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is our joy for his gift to all of you that's listening. And we'll see thee all in heaven, where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.